Uplifting us with the gift of music. God does something to your spirit through the gift of music. So we thank our musicians, those who served last night as well, to help lift all of us up in this process. Just a couple of reminders and announcements. Sunday morning, uh, we have worship at 7.45 and 10.15. And then a special voters meeting after the late service. But this particular Sunday, we're doing a mild adjustment to our schedule. There will not be adult Bible study because we had a Sunday school program intended to be held yesterday, which was a living nativity, and the cold weather led us to decide that wasn't the best way to treat little children. And so we're going to instead have the children's Christmas living nativity service Sunday morning, 10 a.m., I'm sorry, 9 a.m., here in the name. So we won't have adult Bible class so that you can hear the children share the good news of the gospel. And for some of you, bring your children or watch your grandchildren. Speaking as a grandfather and a parent, I realize that you only get to do that so many times in your life and you don't want to miss one of them if you can help. I have a one-year-old granddaughter born last December, baptized her in January. Haven't seen her since. But that's okay, because the Lord's got her safe and sound, so it's all right. 
So as we celebrate today, we realize we can't necessarily be with everyone we want to be with. We can't see everyone we would like to see. But that's what heaven is for. As we describe it in our household, it's the big family reunion at the end of the world. So we're looking forward to that. When Jesus comes again. I invite you to take just a moment, greet those who are worshiping with you, and extend a joyous Christmas greeting to them as well. The order of service that we follow for the festival of the Nativity is Divine Service Setting One from Lutheran Service Book that begins on page 151 in the Lutheran Service Book. Our opening hymn this morning, a Christmas celebration in song, hymn 387, Joy to the World, the Lord is Come. Please rise as we sing this hymn together. <laughs> God 
in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly our psalm, the psalm for today, Psalm 98. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Yahweh has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to Yahweh with the lyre. With the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. And make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. The world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before Yahweh. Are they to judge the earth? He will judge the world with righteousness. And the people with equity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Live in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We join in singing our sermon hymn, hymn 388 in Lutheran service book. Go tell it on the mountain. Imagining 
there are those who don't know Christmas is about the birth of Jesus. But let me help you understand that. I want to show you a, a marvelous piece of artwork. First showed to me years ago by a little child. You know what this is? It's a picture of a man in a white coat milking his cow in the middle of a blizzard. You're just going to have to take my word for that, aren't you? Much like the time when somebody holds up a totally black piece of paper and tells you it's a picture of a black cat in a coal bin at midnight. It's right there in front of you, but you can't see it, can you? You just have to take my word for it. That's the picture of a man in a white coat milking his cow in the middle of a blizzard. It's actually just a blank piece of paper. But you see, this is the problem with our human minds. We cannot grasp God's truth. Human beings without God's blessing will not know God's truth. Several years ago, I had the privilege of conducting a, a wedding for a young lady and her now husband. She happened to be a classmate of some of my sons at school, and they'd asked me to conduct their wedding. This wedding happened to take place out of town, and it was in a school chapel. A very beautiful, but rather, well, I'm going to call it plain school chapel. But right in the middle of the transept is where the church bell tower or steeple is located. Well, one of the things I like to do is to visit bell towers. I try to see where the bell comes from, when it was made, perhaps in honor of or in memory of whom it might have been donated. So after the rehearsal was over, I climbed up in the bell tower. And I discovered that there were no lights installed in this bell tower. And it was about 40 feet by 40 feet by 40 feet. And it was dark. The sun had already gone down. I could see virtually nothing in that bell tower. So I took out my cell phone and said, well, I can turn on my cell phone. It has a flashlight. Took it out, turned on the flashlight. I could see virtually nothing in that bell tower because the power from my cell phone wasn't enough to overcome the distance to the ceiling inside the bell tower. I could not see it. There wasn't enough light. In the Gospel of John, John points out to us that God sends light into darkness. What's interesting is that when you take a match and light it, it immediately generates light. Now the light will go out so far and you can't see beyond the end of that, but the darkness can't put the light out. The darkness can't extinguish the match. Now, if you hold it long enough, it'll burn your fingers, and then you'll probably drop it or blow it out. But the darkness cannot make the match go out. The light from the match, however, can overcome the darkness. What John tells us is that God sent his Son into the world to bring light to darkness. But unlike a match, unlike the small flashlight on a cell phone, Jesus is not limited. Jesus is not restricted. He was limited when he was first born. He chose to humble himself, the Bible says, and take on a servant's form. He limited his use of his divine power. 
So that when he was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, just as God had promised would happen, the city of Bethlehem didn't suddenly bright and overwhelmingly light up the dark sky. God did send angels, you remember, and the light of God's power did shine in the sky outside of Bethlehem. But the baby Jesus didn't shine out with light. In fact, he looked pretty much like every other newborn child. His mother cleaned him up, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and then took the baby and laid him in that feed box, the manger. And I'm sure that in Mary's face, there was a great deal of light celebrating the birth of her child. I'm sure that in Joseph's eyes, there was a bright light shining as he realized God's promises being fulfilled in this little baby. But the power of God was restricted because Jesus chose to limit himself while he was doing the work of saving the world. But I want you to remember for just a minute, Moses, when God called Moses up on Mount Sinai, said, come up here and receive the words of the covenant that you shall now take back to the people. And he went up on the mountain. And God said, I will show you my glory. But if you look upon me, you will die. Turn your face. Put it in this wedged space, this cleft in the rock. And then I will just let the back of my glory shine on that rock. The power and glory of God shone brightly on that rock. The light bounced off the rock into the face of Moses and was absorbed into his skin. And for the next month, Moses glowed in the dark. And the people were afraid to look at him and said, Wear a cloth covering on your face. You terrify us when we look at you. To make sure you and I were not terrified at the arrival of our Savior, he came as a baby. And he turned the volume, the power down on the light in his body but not the light in his being. He remained exactly what he was, the one through whom God created all things, the one who upholds all things by the word of his power, the one who came into the world to be the light of all humanity, not just one nation, not just the people of Israel, Again and again we find these words repeated in the words of the prophet, particularly Isaiah says it, that he will come and be the light for all nations. He will rule all nations. We heard it again in our psalm this morning. Let all the nations praise him. Let all the peoples give praise to the God who will lead us in a new psalm. He shines in the light light of Christ. And as he shines in this world, the darkness has not overcome it. And now we're back to that fine piece of artwork I showed you earlier. You remember? Here it is again. The man in a white coat milking his cow in the middle of a blizzard. And you just can't see it, can you? We cannot comprehend God. We cannot grasp the enormous, overwhelming power of a God who creates all things by his word and yet humbles himself to take the form of a baby. Not until God himself opens our eyes can we see him. Not until God himself makes clear to us who he is, will we know him. 
And that's what we celebrate. We celebrate the fact that God has made himself known to us. And remember how he came to us. Not in a bright, shining, powerful force that would knock people off their feet. Not in a threatening manner of one so powerful that no one can stand to look at him and not die. No. When the light of the world came to shine on all people, he came as a baby. The least threatening thing in human form is a newborn infant. They can do absolutely nothing for themselves. And the one who made all things put himself in that position so he wouldn't scare you away. He brought his light into this world. He brought his light into your life so that you would know he loves you and cares for you. So that you would know you need not run from him in terror. Rather, you can open your arms wide and receive him. John tells us he came to his own. He came to the people of Israel. He came to the ones who had the promises of the prophets and the instruction from Moses and the pattern of worship of the high priest and the sacrifice of the firstborn and the redemption of the firstborn to show that the firstborn is God's to start with. They had all those things God gave them centuries before. And when the promised one came, they couldn't see it. They couldn't see it. What is God showing us today that we don't see? Well, let me help you for just a minute. Let's go back to Isaiah. Come, let us reason together. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as. Though they are red, some red as crimson, yet they shall be like. You know what? This is not a picture of a man in a white coat milking his cow in a blizzard. This is a picture of you standing before God in Christ's righteousness. There is no sin. There is no darkness. There is only light. In him was light, and that light was the life of mankind. In Jesus Christ is the life of all humanity. All human beings are sinners. I am a sinner. You are a sinner. On our own, we don't look like that white piece of paper. We look like the black cat in a coal bin at midnight. All darkness and no light. Which is why Jesus came. To bring you and me the light. The light that the world couldn't produce because it isn't God. The light that you and I don't have in ourselves because we're sinful people. And yet now God has made us new because his son came into the world. Listen again to our reading from Hebrews. In these last days, God has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the the right hand of the majesty on high. After making purification for sins, the baby born in Bethlehem grew up. He worked miracles. He taught God's people. He raised the dead, and then he died for the dead. He died for me, and he died for you. Dead in our sins, the Bible calls us. You were dead in your trespasses and sin. That's what the Bible says about me and about you. And then the Son of God, the very image of God himself, the very imprint of God in human form, 
paid for our sins. He made purification. Now, when I was in college, I managed to get an abscessed blister on my foot once, playing soccer, and I didn't pay careful attention to that blister, and after a couple of days, it got abscessed. I didn't realize that, but it sure hurt a lot. So I went to the emergency room, and the doctor looked at it, and he said, yeah, that's an abscessed blister. We're going to have to take that out. If we leave it any longer, the, the abscess will move into your bone, and then there's a real problem. You might have to lose your foot. So he took out his scalpel and he cut out part of my foot. Because it had to come out or I would die. The abscess had to be removed or the infection would permeate my body. It wasn't an option. It wasn't, well, you can wait and see what happens. No, it was if we don't do this, you will be permanently harmed. You may even die. You see, God has to cut the sin out of us. He has to take our sinful human nature and kill it. And for that, there had to be a human being. And so a little baby came. So that God could cut out the abscess of sin in me and in you and replace it with something pure and new and fresh. As pure, I believe the expression goes, as the wind-driven snow. What color is that again? White. Yeah. You see, he is the light of the world. And the light overcomes the darkness. The darkness doesn't even grasp what it is. But he grasps you. He reaches out and grabs a hold of you. He calls you his. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, he makes you new. And in the water of holy baptism, he clothes you with the righteousness of Christ so that all your sin, all your impurity, having been washed away, is gone, replaced with a white garment of salvation. Other than the picture of the man milking his cow in the blizzard, I didn't make any of that up. God says all of this about you and me. He says this about our Savior, the light for all humanity. He has come that each of us and everyone in the world might have this gift of salvation, but not all do. Sadly, not all will. Not because the darkness overcomes the light, but because some places the light is a chair. You and I have the chance to share the light. You and I are called to be light, just as Christ has made us his. Taking out the impurities, taking away our sin, he's replaced it with his righteousness, and he's planted in us a light to shine in the darkness. That we too, being part of his body, he is the head of his body, the church, being part of his body, we might shine out who we are the light of the world in Jesus Christ the light for all humanity that's what we're here for that's what we do here that's what we're going to keep doing here in Hanover Lutheran Church but also in your homes in your places of work in your schools wherever you go you are the light of the world because Jesus lives in you. And you are the light of the world because you live in him. In him was light. And that light is the life of mankind. It's your life. It's my life. It's lasting forever. And nope, the darkness does not overcome it. Now may the peace of God that passes human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Having heard this life-giving word of God, we join in professing the faith that gives light to the world. Please rise. We speak together the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Having received tithes and offerings as you entered the church, we continue with the singing of the offertory found on page 159 in Lutheran service book, What Shall I Render to the Lord? given to them in the waters of baptism. Grant repentance to parents who have withheld the treasure of baptism from their children. Give to all your people hearts welcoming of children. Continue to expand your kingdom through this blessed doorway to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Word made flesh in your ongoing provision of daily bread, we have seen your glory. By your spirit, visit those who suffer the sick, the sorrowing, the hospitalized, the poor, the destitute, the homeless, the unemployed. Remember those who have requested our intercessions, especially Beverly, Cindy, Audrey, John, Keith, Dale, those receiving care and treatment for cancer and other 
chronic conditions of Sharon and David. For those confined or restricted in their mobility, including Joan, Mike, Charlene, Darlene, Gail, Yvonne, Jack, Mary, Shirley, Maxine, LaDonna. We ask that they might not be given to despair, but entreat their Heavenly Father's protection, even in times of great need. Lord, in your mercy, Word made flesh in your crucifixion and resurrection, we have seen your glory. Give comfort to those who grieve, especially to the family of Pastor Larry Brock and to the members of Emmanuel Congregation and St. John Congregation where he served as pastor. Grant to all people a sure and certain hope in the resurrection of all the dead and eternal life for all believers in you on the day of your return. Keep us steadfast and faithful until that day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Word made flesh in your holy supper. We have seen your glory from your humble entry into our world in the womb of the Blessed Virgin to your first bed in a feed trough. You set aside the honor you rightly deserve to bless us with your presence. As you now come to us humbly under the forms of bread and wine, Bless us with a right faith that we might worthily receive your body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Word made flesh, we give you thanks that of your mercy and compassion you become incarnate and have redeemed us from sin and everlasting death. Enlighten our hearts by your Holy Spirit that we may ever be thankful for such grace and comfort ourselves by it in all tribulation and temptation and at the last obtain eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart, let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
continue with the singing of the post-communion canticle on page 164 in Lutheran service book. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Thank you. 